This is William Huang, and welcome to the pharmacology section on toxicities and side effects. There is not much to discuss regarding this section on specific antidotes. Mechanisms of action are rarely asked, but memorizing the list shown here is important since these appear on the step one every now and then. I'll highlight the ones I think are most common or might have some unique aspect to them. Acetaminophen can be oxidized to NAPQI, a metabolite that is toxic for the liver. NAPQI can be conjugated to glutathione to form a non-toxic byproduct, but in cases of acetaminophen overdose, glutathione is depleted. N-acetylcysteine is a metabolic precursor for glutathione, and therefore can be administered to replete glutathione levels to prevent NAPQI-induced hepatotoxicity. Interestingly, it can also be used as a mucolytic in diseases such as cystic fibrosis. Glucagon is useful for treating beta blocker overdose because it increases cyclic AMP levels in the myocardium, which bypasses the blocked beta adrenergic system. To treat digitalis poisoning, four things need to be done. First, stop digitalis administration. Second, normalize potassium levels. Third, give antidigitalis fab fragments. Digitalis is one of the few drugs that has a monoclonal antibody as an antidote. Finally, give magnesium an antiarrhythmic agent that may act as an indirect antagonist. In methanol or ethylene glycol poisoning, the parent compounds are not as toxic as the metabolites resulting from the action of alcohol dehydrogenase. A surprising yet effective treatment is giving ethanol to compete with methanol or ethylene glycol for binding to alcohol dehydrogenase, but this clearly has negative side effects. A better treatment is fomepazole, a competitive inhibitor of alcohol dehydrogenase. In cases of warfarin overdose, fresh frozen plasma is given for immediate reversal of anticoagulation, while vitamin K is given for longer-term reversal. Heparin overdose can be treated with protamine sulfate, a highly cationic peptide that binds to heparin and forms a stable ion pair that does not have anticoagulant activity. This section of pharmacology is a compilation of facts from other chapters. Since it is all covered elsewhere, we won't cover these in this part of the lecture. However, it would be a good idea to use them to quiz yourself after studying each organ system. The P450 system refers to a superfamily of enzymes found mainly in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of hepatocytes. In the liver, these enzymes catalyze the metabolism of both exogenous drugs and toxins as well as endogenous compounds. In addition to being metabolized by the cytochrome P450 system, many drugs also either induce or inhibit the system. This in turn affects the metabolism of other drugs and forms a basis for many clinically important drug-drug interactions. P450 inducers can be remembered with the mnemonic Queen Barb Steals Fenfen and Refuses Greasy Carbs Chronically for quinidine, barbiturates, St. John's wort, phenytoin, rifampin, griseofulvin, carbamazepine, and chronic alcohol use. P450 inhibitors can be remembered with the mnemonic Magic Rax, which stands for some macrolides such as erythromycin but not others such as azithromycin, amiodarone, grapefruit juice, isoniazid, cimetidine, ritonavir, acute alcohol abuse, ciprofloxacin, ketoconazole, and sulfonamides. It is important to recognize sulfa drugs because patients with allergies can have a severe reaction. Patients with sulfa allergies should not take any drugs in this class, and these include probenicid, furosemide, acetazolamide, celecoxib, thiazides, sulfonamide antibiotics, sulfasalazine, sulfonylureas, which you can remember with the mnemonic popular facts. Allergic patients can develop fever, urinary tract infection, pruritic rash, Stevens-Johnson syndrome, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, agranulocytosis, and urticaria or hives. Some of these reactions can be life-threatening. 